is Scarewolf. Now this thing is like heavy metal, hairy, scary monster stuff. Comes with two car lights for lightning effects and it's three cylinders, cylinders to thrash his arms and then the main cylinder to throw him out. But it is really, really heavy duty metal and it, it, the floor actually shakes kind of when he's going off. And then as he comes out, to kind of increase the interactiveness of him, he that obviously is to scare you, but then he blasts you with air as he's coming out through uh, through a nozzle here. This is our pumpkin witch, new for 2023. She comes with these these gordy warts and things that are kind of orange, and then she slow fades into a, a fleshy green, and uh, and she's just it's really an unusual and super cool uh, concept. And her legs are painted also, you know, the gnarly feet, the little lit pumpkin. You can bend her arms. Oh yeah. So you can position those arms however you want. We kind of made her pointing, but you don't have to do that. But I, I, I thought it was kind of cool to have her, you know, be able to lift her hand. You can bend it at the elbow, but you can have her pointing the way to the, your uh, guest doom. Yeah, she's all complete and gorgeous. Gorgeous. This is the mutant as a prop display. Now we actually got a lot of requests for this last year. And when we originally created him, we created him so that he could be made as a prop. He basically comes in two parts. The legs and chest are separate. And you just kind of pull down his britches to divide him. There's uh, pipes that go together there and he has a metal stand. Uh, also, he's got wires in his hands so you can adjust them to uh, whatever you want. If you want him to terrorize the neighborhood, look like he's about to pounce on him, he'll do that. But uh, it's just a really big, cool monster. And uh, we wanted to offer this for sale this year. So the mutant. decided to branch out and embark on a new venture. I can tell you it's tremendous. There's that and these. Now these are kind of twisted to fit in the box, but I'll show you how to untwist them. This. And then the last piece, friendly fella. Well, maybe he hasn't had his coffee yet. Anyway, this is the pieces. Now, it comes with a stand and pieces that stick the tree together. Let me tell you, this thing's big. So you start by setting the base down where you want it. You might want to screw it to the floor or Stake it to the ground, depending on your situation, if it's outside. And you just start putting the pieces down, starting with the roots. We put these in. Now these go inside and they'll be in the box and those allow them to fit snugly together and make the, the thing really strong. goes on the top and you know this stuff's 
not ridiculously heavy, but it is nice if you got help. Then, now the arms are gonna, we have to kind of crimp them to fit them in the box. So um, the fingers move and the arm can be positioned forward uh, depending on the effect you want, but they just go right in like that. Very easy, very simple. Do what you want, you can spread them out. And there's um, a piece of square tubing inside that's bigger than this square tubing that they fit into. And you just kind of jostle them into place. Also included is this creepy cloth. Now you may or may not want to use this, but we thought it would look good to put little stringers on after you set it up. And that is up to your eye and what you want it to look like. But you can just give him kind of a creepy, mossy, weird sort of look by just taking bits, just cutting, cutting off bits of cloth and hanging them off the fingers. Now you could um, hot glue these on if you wanted, but um, you might want to change them out if they get ratty or something. Creepy cloth is a pretty common thing in the in the haunt industry, and it's it it just adds that little bit of extra weirdness that's kind of nice. The flame bulb that comes with it has three settings. You can turn it on to kind of pulse in and out. You can turn it on so that it's solid, like that, or the flame bulb. Systems fading. All this is the alien parasite. Now, something's going wrong. You can tell by the audio. It's telling you to get out and, and there's system, uh, let's see, system breach or something. But um, the idea is feel safe. They see the thing and say, oh, he wiggles in there. They feel safe. And they have no idea when the fog comes that this is disappearing and their safety zone is gone. So as they're watching it, it's like, yeah, there's a little thing in there. And suddenly, for like one second, they're in a horror movie. The thing has broken out and come at them. So um, we're hoping that that scares a lot of people. Besides the scare part of it, where their you know their safety zone has been compromised, we put a spitter up here, so you can control the amount of water coming out of this, and it just makes it a little more interactive. Like, there's not only is there safety zone. God, but he's like, you know, the tank is spitting stuff or something, or he's spitting at him and, and something slimy and nasty. Of course, it's just water, but you don't know that in that one second of terror. If you're wanting to use an actor, he might want to be, you know, move them uh, dials, say, oh, something's wrong, I'm taking, and then he pushes this button, and off it goes. And all these lights function. Uh, we've got these uh, beacon lights up on top when it fires, and then this whole thing drops down out of the way. I'll, I'll show you real quick. This is the button. So now, but you can also run it with a uh, motion sensor or timer, whatever you want. But this is, if you were using an actor, he could just kind of suddenly, let's see here, what's going on here? Uh oh, uh oh, you know, that kind of thing. And off he goes. And he comes out, and of course, there's metal in here, but it's all shrouded in um, 
uh, rubber. This comes up slow, make sure nobody's got their hands in and stuff, but it's it's really um, an amazing piece for us. Plus, it's all very accessible. Like the, we wanted it to be like super user friendly. So this is on hinges and you can just open it up and access these cylinders. His cylinder is accessible. And then the cylinder in back is all opened up. So it's very, very simple to um, work on um, and if needs be, but we try. <laughs> We try to buy all super industrial stuff, so this is built to last, um, and it's complicated but simple. This is like bulletproof uh, stuff, so it's very strong. In fact, the whole thing, I mean, it's typical. It's all metal construction. Back in the back, everything is really tight. The fog shoots into this big tunnel. that wise off into two smaller ones. The electrical fire is up here and um, then the water jug is here and then you get a, a control for how much of the spittle coming out of the creature uh, hits your gas and uh, but it's again everything's easily accessed all the controls and uh, and uh, cylinders and things are very easy to get to. They have these aqua effects. There's a white one on top and a green one, but you can change them both. You can uh, choose whatever you want. Like if you wanted a different effect, you can change the colors. Um, you can do some weird strobing things. Just tons of different effects. <laughs> Look at my face! Yeah. Air Trans World 2023, absolutely amazing. The oh. Sorcerer's booth is amazing. Every year. Every year, it's great. We have a great, great time. We have yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, we love a lot, a lot of scare. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome! is After Midnight. This is from a Lon Chaney movie called London After Midnight. Take everything out of the bags. It comes with a uh, heavy duty metal stand. He has a firelight, he has a crazy wig, and a suit, and then a cape. So this is Lon Chaney Sr. And Jordu did a really good job capturing that that makeup. And you know, one of the things I found as I studied this, in fact, when Jordu was talking about it, I said, well, he's wearing some sort of appliance. And Jordu goes, no, he isn't. And he said, yes, he is. Nobody could make a face like that. And he's like, no, he isn't. And he said he had wires in his dentures. So he put these dentures on and they like pushed this is his face. It pushed his mouth into this crazy smile with these wires and it was so hard to wear that it, he could only film for a few minutes and he had to get those things out. So he comes with a firelight, which is really cool, human hair, uh, eyebrows, and a cool creepy wig, this top hat, and a heavy metal stand and legs. You start by putting, there's uh, holes in the bottom of the feet that go to poles, 
and you slide them on the stand. And then the upper body, and those just slide right in to the leg poles. And then if you, his, his uh, shirt stuff cover this up or the, the suit, but you can pull the pants up around the top if you want. Jordu did a phenomenal job capturing that bizarre smile that uh, Lon Chaney had developed. One of the things that we're trying to do with a series of characters like this is we're trying to blur the line between wax museum characters and a Halloween prop. And we really felt like this does. Now obviously, it's not silicone, it's not wax, but we really tried hard to get him beautiful and that's why um, we wanted to have the best sculpture we could and we put a lot of time into this guy. So anyway, there he is, London After Midnight. You dare to enter my presence. You have come too far. The darkness surrounds you. Your journey is in peril. Death and life are in the balance. Treachery surrounds you. Stay in the shadows. Your regrets will be many before the madness begins. You are lost forever. <laughs> 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 <laughs>